Welcome to our video series on diabetes and beyond. This video will address strategies to improve diabetes management in long-term care settings. You may watch each video in order or based upon your interest. The objective for this learning session is to achieve the following. Describe approaches for the diagnosis and treatment of diabetes. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force and the American Diabetes Association recommends the following screening for type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes in asymptomatic adults aged 35 to 70 years old. The first one is hemoglobin A1c. And this is a great test if you want to know somebody's average blood sugar levels for the past two to three months. The second one is fasting plasma glucose test. This requires the patient to fast for eight hours, no food or drink except water, before tested. The second one is the oral glucose tolerance test. And this is the same test used um, for women um, in pregnancy. So you come in, you get your glucose test level, then you drink this sugary product and then two hours later, you're tested again. The last one is the random blood glucose test, and this can be done at any time. There are no requirements for when you last ate or what you ate, um, and it's a great test to use in the moment if you have a patient who clearly has some um, red flag symptoms. I'm not gonna go through every treatment in detail, but let's cover the basics of anti-diabetic treatments. We have various options, including metformin, insulin, sulfonylureas, SGLT2 inhibitors, GLP-1 receptor agonists, along with diet and exercise. These treatments are tailored to the patient's management plan and the type of diabetes they have. Some patients are insulin resistant, and what this means is that their body is producing enough insulin, but it's just not working, it's not as effective. Insulin deficiency, on the other hand, means that your pancreas is not producing enough insulin to keep your blood sugar levels even. These different classes of drugs work in various ways. Here's a summary. Anti-diabetic agents, these drugs are chemically and pharmacologically diverse. The main goal is to prevent spikes and drops in blood sugar levels throughout the day. We aim to keep blood glucose levels stable. Good control of blood glucose is widely accepted as a way to prevent the development of microvascular and macrovascular complications. For diabetes 2 treatment, options include increasing insulin secretion by using or prescribing sulfonylureas, improving insulin sensitivity can be done by using metformin, and then to reduce the intake of carbohydrates, use the GLP-1 receptor agonist medications. These treatments all help manage blood sugar levels effectively. When assessing patients, particularly those aged 65 and older in long-term care, it's crucial to consider the factors that increase the risk of treatment-associated hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia in long-term care is a significant problem, especially for those who are not con cognitively intact. Several scenarios and medications can cause hypoglycemia. Often it's related to food intake or lack of it. Insulins, particularly long acting insulins, um, are not preferred. It's better to use the rapid acting ones. Um, old age, so patients who are older, they have less body fat and they're just frailer. If they have cognitive impairment, they may not recognize the signs and symptoms of a low blood sugar. Um, unawareness of physical or intellectual dis disabilities, um, and this can impact their food intake. Um, alcohol use, this can cause blood sugar to drop significantly. 
polypharmacy. If you're using um, way too complicated regimens of med multiple medications, especially the ACE inhibitors and beta blockers, you're putting a patient at a much higher rate of developing hypoglycemia. Um, kidney function decreases with age, um, affecting medication metabolism. The longer you've had diabetes, the more likely there is damage to your body over that time. If you've had a history of severe hypoglycemic events, you are definitely at a greater risk. So this just means it's essential to monitor your blood sugar and those factors that can be related to it developing in your patient. The biggest takeaway from this talk is the importance of a patient-centered approach. This means truly understanding your patient, their exercise patterns, their eating habits, and how they manage their diabetes. For example, um, if they're sick and they only eat super jello when they're ill, they need to know how to adjust their diabetic medication or insulin accordingly. Decision cycle for glycemic management in type 2 diabetes includes making sure the patient is checking those blood sugars routinely throughout the day. Consider uh, special factors that may impact it, such as financial. Um, perhaps they don't have enough money or can't afford to purchase their medications or insulin. Agree on a management plan, and this isn't a one and done. Um, patients need to know, let's just try it for a few weeks and then we can make adjustments if we need to. Providing ongoing support and mentoring cannot be stressed enough. Uh, a patient has to make so many different changes in their life due to diabetes. So if there is anything we can do to support them, the better. Review and agree on a management plan. So many patients struggle with psychosocial issues related to diabetes. So a comprehensive head to toe approach is essential. In summary, here are some key takeaways from today's presentation. So diabetes management is a partnership. Keeping a log of blood sugar levels is crucial. Um, patients need to know when to stop taking their metformin, such as if they're having a procedure that includes using a contrast dye. And guidelines for older adults um, who are more likely to develop hypoglycemia is to make sure that their A1C levels do not dip below seven. Here are some tools and resources to further explore the information we've discussed here today. If you have any questions about this video ser series or others, please contact us at info at superiorhealthqa.org. Thank you.